India is losing its air power race not just against China, but also against Pakistan, faster than ever before. While China is pumping out stealth fighters and Pakistan is upgrading its fleet with help from Beijing, the Indian Air Force is stuck between aging aircraft and slow replacements. And now, with India deciding to retire the MiG-21, the situation's getting worse. The MiG-21s may be outdated, but they were still filling the numbers. The IAF was already short of jets, and now, with these going out, the gap is even wider. So, what does the Indian Air Force currently have, and can it stand against Pakistan or China? What's the plan for the future? And will India be able to overcome this dangerous aircraft shortage? Once, the MiG-21 was the backbone of the Indian Air Force, with a fleet of around 800 aircraft in the 1980s. Today, only one squadron, about 16 to 18 jets remains, and even that is set to retire by March 2026, as the jets are outdated and accident-prone, unfit for modern warfare. The problem? India doesn't have enough jets ready to replace them. India's current fighter fleet consists of over 450 jets, primarily made up of around 260 Su-30 MKIs. Other aircraft include over 30 Rafales, 65 MiG-29s, 50 Mirage 2000s, and more than 40 Tejas MK-1s. The IAF is officially sanctioned for 42 squadrons, but only has around 30 right now, and most jets are either aging or few in number. India mostly has fourth-generation fighters. These jets can strike deep inside Pakistan and defend India's borders. But against China's J-10C, and especially the stealthy J-20, they're falling behind. The MiG-29 and Mirage 2000 in India's fleet are upgraded, but they're still jets from the 1980s. Both are expected to retire by the early 2030s. Once they're gone, India could lose over 100 fighters, unless replacements are ready. That would leave only the Su-30 MKI, Rafale and Tejas in service. It's unlikely that India will add more Su-30 MKIs to the fleet. Instead, it plans to upgrade 84 of the existing ones. As it's still an old airframe, India can't expect it to perform like the latest jets. While the 180-plus non-upgraded Su-30 MKIs will likely have to be gradually phased out between the late 2030s and mid-2040s. That means nearly 60% of the IAF's current fleet won't be able to serve in the next two decades. India will not only need replacements, it will need more jets than it currently has to compete with its rivals. So far, the only confirmed additions are 26 Rafale naval version jets and 83 Tejas MK-1A jets by 2030. These additions aren't enough to fill the huge gap. So far, the real hope for India is the Tejas MK-1A. It's a modern jet, and India could receive it in decent numbers. India is also eyeing the Russian Su-57 stealth fighter, but its production in Russia is slow due to sanctions and funding issues. If a deal is signed soon, India could receive its first batch of Su-57s, around 12 to 18 fighters, by 2032. However, the delivery of over 100 Su-57s is unlikely before 2040. India's own fifth-generation fighter program also cannot immediately fill the gap. The first squadron is not expected to be inducted before 2035, and mass production may only be possible after 2040. In short, the Indian Air Force is facing a fighter jet shortage, which could become more severe between 2028 and 2032, unless India secures a Su-57 deal with fast-tracked delivery and accelerates its AMCA program. Now compare that to Pakistan. By 2030, Pakistan may operate over 200 fourth and 4.5 generation JF-17 Block 3 and Block 4 jets and could also begin fielding its fifth generation J-35 fighter. 
If India doesn't urgently fast-track the Su-57 deal, accelerate the development of fifth-generation fighters, or significantly increase Tejas production, Pakistan could find itself in its strongest relative position by the late 2020s and early 2030s. When it comes to China, India simply can't compete. By 2035, China is expected to have over 250 J-20 stealth jets and could even start using sixth-generation fighters.